and this was actually this photo is updating to Fedora 36, which I did on release day on my P1 Gen 4. It's my daily driver. So I was sitting there watching the update, uh, which all went really smoothly. My only panic was, would it be done before my next meeting? Um, and, and I was sitting there going, oh, I should take a photo. So there you go. That was uh, <laughs> that's Fedora 36 installing on uh, my running system. But anyway, let's see if this works. Yay, it does. Okay, so I can't see my screen, but it still let me present. Uh, so obviously, huge congratulations to the Fedora community, uh, Fedora 36. I think you've got a sweet release. Uh, the work you guys are doing in the Linux ecosystem is, is genuinely awesome. You're a fantastic community to work with from, you know, from my point of view personally, but also from the Lenovo team's point of view. You know, thank you for all the work you're doing and how great you are to work with. And you make my life easy getting Linux on these new laptops is hell um, in a good way. But you, Fedora really is um, a fantastic community to work with and just keep doing what you're doing. I genuinely, uh, all the issues are not really Fedora related, they're other stuff. And, and I'm going to touch on that uh, a little bit just so I want to talk about what's coming up. I don't do sales, I'm not a salesperson, I'm an engineer. So apologies, it's going to be probably not salesy enough. But um, I did want to just do a quick recap on on last year. So um, we we 2021 was 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 kind of a rough year to be honest. Uh, I'm sure it was for everybody. Uh, so just based specifically from the Linux team point of view, right? We we had the same COVID challenges as everybody. Lots of component shortages, which really had some problems, which I will get uh, into shortly. But um, I know I heard you know I listen I listened to you know. Linux Action News and, and all these podcasts and all the news. And I saw, oh, Lenovo's given up on Linux. That really, really wasn't the case. We worked really hard last year. Lots of challenges. So I'm going to go over just a few of those. And my aim here is just to kind of set the scene. So I'm going to talk about the upcoming platform, Fedora 36. But this kind of, I just want to make sure everybody's aware there's things don't always happen as they should, but we are working really hard and trying to solve those. And I, and, and I have positive expectations just to kind of set the scene. So um, start off with the good stuff. X1 Carbon 9 with Fedora was released in the US and in Europe, which was a big breakthrough. So I took a couple of screenshots. This was a week, week and a half ago when I put these slides together. So that particular one is from the Canadian site. So you can see it's on the, that was the X1 Carbon 9, uh, Fedora 33 um, was up on the site. So that that's there. I think still there. I, I think it is. I should have checked it before, but it was there, there a week ago. And the other one, which was actually good news, and oh, that's looking weird, but uh, we got it up in Europe as well. So it was nice to kind of crack the Europe web team. The way it works for me is I have to sell my case to all the different web teams around the world. And then so the European web team got comment. That's that snapshot is actually from the French website. But my understanding is it should be on any of the European websites. So you can go buy Fedora on an X1 Carbon 9. Uh, which is cool. And basically, my aim this year is to get more geographies out and, and more platforms. But that's the, that was the highlight. Uh, so I put it in yellow. Uh, we did get a P1 Gen 4 out for the UMA SKU, uh, sorry, SKU configuration. So UMA means no NVIDIA card. Basically, we worked so hard with NVIDIA and with the Red Hat engineers, primarily the Red Hat engineers, in all fairness. Um, but um, <laughs> Thanks for the notes in the comment. Um, but yeah, we could not get the Nouveau driver to the stage where we could actually it met our quality. We 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 do test this. We have a, a a level that we have to a standard we have to reach. We know most people who buy a NVIDIA based system are going to put the binary driver on it. But if we are shipping a preload, it has to meet standard. So we couldn't get the NVIDIA driver up and running. But the workstation team and in all fairness, the US web team were really good and they said, okay. We're not going to manage this, but we will do the UMA SKU. So uh, that's how you get it. That's There's one particular, you have to have the right CPU. It took me a while to find it, but uh, they put that up. And and honestly, I, I have lots of things to complain about, but the web team were kind of good. The web team hate having extra special rules to put in place, but they did do it for this. Uh, and uh, thankful for that. Um, the, oh, sorry, that was the P1 Gen 4. Uh, I didn't press the right key. So that's, so that's the P1 Gen 4. That's going to stay there for a while because I don't have any more screenshots. Um, so the bad news was oh, UMA means no NVIDIA card. Uh, so it's uh, Intel graphics. Uh, I'm not sure what it stands for. I should know. Uh, that's terrible internal speak. But that's, uh, yeah, it's the basically the uh, native graphics only. Um, so yeah, P15 Gen 2 obviously didn't happen. We don't have a non-NVIDIA configuration for it. Thanks, Matthew. Um, and so, yeah, basically that got 
clobbered. So, uh, and and again, kind of the same issue that we hit in 2020, unfortunately, with the new boat driver. So it's sad. I know there's so much work going on there. You might have seen the announcements from NVIDIA just this week. So like the end of tunnel, I, I don't know what's going to happen this year. I'm kind of looking forward more to 2020. Three, four, five for when we'll actually be in good shape. Like that. Anyway, well, it's one of those challenges. This is one of the uh, issues with Linux, one of the things that we have to, to work through. So I never announced this platform, um, uh, uh, <laughs> kind of deliberately, uh, but we had previously one of the Fedora, I think it was Fedora Nest, there was like, you know, which CPU you'd want to see things on. Um, and I actually asked Matthew to, I, hopefully we'll get a poll because I've got a similar, I put, I put some polls on with things that I thought might be fun to talk about, but um, there was a request like more AMD. So we're like more AMD. I'm like, the workstation team said, yep, let's do a Fedora release on the AMD platform. So like, yeah, let's go. Um, so we weren't really expecting this one to be a particularly uh, hard one. <laughs> yeah, saying you nice. Let me tell the story first. <laughs> so um, Wi-Fi components were utterly beautiful last year. Uh, so we had it all lined up with, I believe it was an Intel chip that had support in, in the kernel uh, and component shortages. So they came to us and said, oh, we've got to switch to Realtek. Uh, and we're like, ah, but the Realtek driver's not upstream yet. So we talked to Realtek and like, yeah, we can get this done, but it will be, you know, the process takes time, we develop the driver, get it upstream, yada, yada, yada. So August, we're like, okay, well, well, we'll be late, but, you know, such is life. Uh, and then, so we did that and then uh, they came and said, well, oh, shortage on the Realtek. So, uh, we're gonna have some media tech components as well. We're like, oh, well, can we just do the Linux for just the real tech so we can get this out and we'll worry about media. And no, no, basically in manufacturing, they were like, we're gonna stick in whatever we got. So you need to have support for media tech. Okay, okay, okay. We'll talk to media tech, media tech. Yes, we'll get the kernel drive up. It's gonna be September. All right, okay. So September, so. Then the product team comes to us, ah, more shortages. We're going to be putting a Qualcomm part on it. You've got to be kidding me. So there's some dents in my wall. Um, and, but uh, yeah, so towards Qualcomm, again, all of these manufacturers, the good thing to take out of this is these manufacturers are doing Linux drivers upstream. So that's good. Let's be, you know, but, but Qualcomm were basically, by the time we got the Qualcomm firm, the last piece was the firmware in the Linux, firm, uh, in Linux firmware. That was, I think, uh, it, was, it was a couple of months ago, if that. Um, and again, kudos to the Fedora community. Uh, was it Justin or Inigo? Uh, anyway, someone from the, you know, we updated Linux firmware right away. Like it landed, boom, into Fedora. Uh, and so we've got a cut for preload. You guys did that first. We've got that after QA and then we found, and honestly, this is something we should have caught earlier, but there's a mother bug. It's related to mirror mode and kind of you know that's still under active work but uh, i don't think i'm going to get that release officially online at too late now like we're you know all the gen 3s are around the corner so the, just telling you this story just so you understand some of what goes on internally and why when we get on to the next section yay, kind of 22, this is what we're all really interested in i could put hopefully asterisk i hope so fingers crossed uh go Sacrifice your ritual, go uh, all, all that kind of stuff. Um, so, <laughs> just fedora community, okay? <laughs> so let's go over um, the other thing. I try to be very careful. With this I haven't uh, taken any. I've, I've only used content that I have that is on a Lenovo public site. So, um, and there's a few things we have to skirt around because they're not announced. So just bear with me, but I think I'll be able to give you some stuff that's interesting. So X1 Carbon 10, kind of obvious. We're going to be doing Fedora on the X1 Carbon 10. Uh, we've been actually, actually, for this one, we've been waiting for Fedora 36 to release. So I've, I've been attending some of the, uh, the Go No Go meetings just to keep track of it. And as soon as we got the Go uh, you know, conclusion from Ben, uh, that image went straight off to go into a preload and went off to, um, <laughs> I don't know, Marie, you're fine. I'm not going to say anything too stupid. <laughs> so uh, we went straight off. And so that image is in our QA right now and it's off to energy certification and yet Neil I was but I was yeah every week I was like is it gonna go uh, is that really a blocker <laughs> so, but hey I have the same thing on my side so it's, it's all cool it actually works out kind of well uh, honestly so um, that's going we did do a pre-run with uh, one of the beta releases I think uh, back in the middle of um, middle of April we did you know one of the Fedora 36 candidate releases we did a free run of that 
honestly, no, no issues. I'm expecting a fairly smooth ride. <laughs> I might regret that one. Um, there, are, there are three things to mention on the F1 Carbon Dent. So we do still have two blocker issues um, that are, are holding up a release. They're both firmware related. They're not, you know, Linux -y kernel user space. They're, they're both firmware related. One is thermal throttling. Um, so the, I should actually talk, so I'm, I'm not good at sales. X1 Carbon 10 has got the Old Lake um, P um, CPU. So Intel have actually done a really nice job on that. The CPU it has got the uh, different, the two different cores, the hybrid cores with the P cores and the E cores. Um, I'm not going to talk about all their wonderfulness, but you know, the, I talked to the Intel team and they've done some really nice work in the scheduler and the performance, um, you know, the performance you should be able to get out of these machines is good. Um, we are the X1 Carbon 10, if you've seen it, uh, thank, thank you, Matthew, for the polls, uh, is thin and light. So it's definitely a big thermal challenge. You can see the hardware team have done some work on there, but um, we have, uh, one of the blocker issues I have is just thermal throttling on this. So I've done some tested some trial bosses from the firmware team, uh, and it's looking it's looking promising. Uh, we just haven't actually signed off on it, but I'm expecting that in the next couple of weeks, and that should tie up nicely with as it goes through our QA and all that. So hopefully that will be fixed, uh, ready for a release on the web. Uh, we have another issue with an ACPI storm related to W1. Funny enough, that doesn't impact uh, Fedora. So I think you guys are fine. It's related to the version of modem manager. So that one should be a no-op, but um, we still still a little bit nervous just because root cause, it's, uh, it is ultimately related to the way the firmware is defining some of the signals. So um, that one's just, just on the radar. Um, the other one which I do want to mention is this, uh, the X1 Carbon 10 is the first platform we've had with MIPI cameras. Uh, and I think I've talked about this in uh, Nest previously, but do not buy the configuration with a MIPI camera. So uh, we will be blocking it for the Linux configuration. You won't be able to buy Linux with a MIPI camera, but if you need to buy the Windows version because that's what's available in your geo, or you do need Windows so you can dual boot, or someone's just, you, you like pain and suffering. Um, if you have to buy it, just don't buy the MIPI configuration. It, it doesn't work. Um, we are working with Intel so that there will be a workaround so you can get your camera working and have something on your system. It's a closed source, ugly, you know, and, and kudos to Intel that they are doing it. Um, but yeah, if you can avoid it, um, and we are working with Intel to have an open source longer term solution. It's going to be, it's a little bit slow burner is the wrong word, but it's going to take time. Uh, so for now, if in doubt, throw me out. Uh, hey, that's catchy. Yeah. So that's the X1 Carbon 10. Um, so P1 Gen 5, I have this, this is, a bit, this is a bit more of an awkward one for me because we haven't actually announced it. Um, there are some sites and I put some links later on with some reviews of it. Um, so there is the P1 Gen 5. I don't actually have like an internal page that I can show the details, but it's an old Lake H um, platform. So, um, and basically it's the next gen of the P1 Gen 4. So go check it. I personally, um, I'm using the P1 Gen 4. It's my daily driver. I, I could, it's probably my, my preferred machine. I try and switch between all the different platforms just to make sure I, I try and use them as a regular person would, but it, it, it's a nice machine. Uh, so, yep, we'll be doing the P1 Gen 5. We'll be doing a full release, Fedora release on this. Comes with the Asterix. Let's hope we can get those Nouveau driver issues sorted. I know the I know the team at Red Hat are working hard on it. I'm really hoping that we'll get some breakthroughs, but no promises. So uh, that's the P1 Gen 5. Um, all right, this one's even more fun because I, put, I called it the T16-ish AMD. So it's not the T16 AMD, but it's very, very similar. And if you look to the previous slide, I'm sure you'll figure it out, but we haven't actually announced it. So um, we're going to call it the T16-ish. AMD T16 specs are really similar. And just as an aside, I'm kind of hoping that if we do one, we'll do the T16 as well. But I haven't actually managed to get that approved yet. But um, so uh, I'm kind of excited about the AMD platforms this year. So AMD have a Linux, a new Linux client team. That's a new product. I'm fair they've been doing it for a year now. Um, but they're awesome. They're genuinely, I mean, they're, you know, I'm not dissing anybody else, but you know, they they really they're pushing us, which I love. Um, so you know, I spend some time working with hardware vendors and nagging and trolling, saying, "Look, you got to do this in an open source friendly way." They the AMD are doing some some really great work. I you know, and I think we're going to start to see the benefits of that. They're definitely pushing our firmware team, which if anybody has one of these AMD platforms, uh, you'll appreciate. Um, <laughs> so it's good and. 
Uh, I've got some good hopes for this. So we're still going through bring up on that. We've got some issues to solve, but there's some genuinely nice stuff happening with the AMD platforms. I have to wait until we've actually completed it to know how good a shape it's going to be. And, you know, I'm, I'm always nervous about component shortages, obviously. Um, but it's so far, it's looking good. So there will be at least one T16-ish AMD platform. And then the last one, I've got to keep an eye on time. Oh, no, I'm good. Um, so we have the new Z series or Z series. Uh, I, I'm, I'm English, ultimately, but I've lived in North America long enough. So I'm going to call it the Z series because it sounds so much better. Uh, unless you're singing the alphabet song. Um, so again, apologies for the crappy screenshot. Uh, there's a link that I've got, I think, in the next slide. Go check it out. That's the whole marketing swishy. You know, they have laptops flying around and they ask important questions like, what are you going to do with your life? And it's like, well, if I could just sit outside and drink coffee, that would be fine. But apparently I need a computer to do that. But anyway, th it, it, you know, if you want to go see all the glossy stuff, check on that link. They, did, they actually did kind of a nice job. So uh, this is the new, basically it's the equivalent of the X1. So the X1 is our premium Intel, you know, cutting edge, uh, and, and that's all. So this is the AMD equivalent. So it's a new series, brand new, and we are doing Linux support on it. And I'm personally also, I'm genuinely quite excited about that. Is I, I did have a Z16 and I'm kind of expecting this might become my daily driver, but unfortunately I bricked it. Uh, joys of early hardware is that firmware updates are terrifying uh, and I did a bad one. Uh, so I'm waiting to get a replacement for it. But yeah, these are, I have very high expectations for these and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, to when I can actually really use it. We've, we've still got quite a few issues solved, but we've got a good handle on them. Um, not ready yet, but uh, going there and again, so baseball from AMD. So that's what we have in the lineup. Um, I think I'm gonna be able to share these slides. I'm sure Matthew and Marie will let me know where to put them. So I've got some links there, um, especially if you wanted to check out what the details on the P1 Gen 5, that's not a Lenovo site. Um, so, uh, actually, Neil, I will come back to you on that one. Um, I'm going to just, a couple of extras that I put in, just because these are actually more industry-wide. I don't think they're particularly Lenovo-specific, but just so you're aware. There's this new secured core PC specification that you might have seen. It comes from Microsoft. Uh, we have it on our ThinkPads. Uh, and the only thing to be aware as a, as a Linux user is, so part of secured core PC means to get that designation, you have removed the... A third party certificate that Microsoft use and that we use for signing shim um, to let all secure boot stuff work with Linux. So to get the, you know, that certificate is disabled by default. So if you get the Lenovo laptops, there is a setting in the BIOS you can go to and it says enable third party certificate. So if you want to enable secure boot, go turn that on. I believe we'll have it, you know, that certificate enabled on our Linux configuration PCs, of course. Um, I know it kind of sucks. In all fairness to Microsoft, it's kind of a big security hole. So I can understand why they'd say ship with it disabled. It, it, it is what it is, right? I mean, yes. Uh, I, when I first saw it, I was like, yeah. uh, it's not as bad as it seems. But anyway, there's a document there explaining what it is that I put together. And I just, this is not going to be a Lenovo thing. Uh, so just if you're buying a new PC and you want to run Linux on it, I mean, it, it sounds stupid. You want the Linux support. But if, if, if secure boot is important to you, that makes sure whatever the vendor is that they have the support to be able to enable that. Honestly, I'd be surprised if any vendor doesn't have it because it does get used for running diagnostics and, you know, um, I think BitLock, not a BitLock. Oh, shoot, I forgot the name. But yeah, there's other tools that use it. It's not just Linux, but just wanted to make that as a heads up, something to keep an, aware, keep an eye out on for new hardware, um, which is where. And I put a link in for our Linux site if you're, if you're you know, we do other platforms other than the ones we do Fedora on. The Fedora offerings are growing because you guys are awesome and we want to do more of that, but it does take time, resources, and all that. So we, um, we do have you know, the other ones, there, which Fedora runs on great, right? I put, I, I run Fedora on virtually everything I get a hold of just to check and it, and it all runs good. So even if we don't have it as preload, you should still get the experience. All righty. Um, yeah, Neil, uh, I, I've had some interesting conversations and thoughts, but anyway. Um, so questions, I try, I, I'm not good at multitasking, but there's been a whole bunch on the side. Um, I have put my Mark Pearson at Lenovo.com. You are very welcome to email me with questions if I can't answer anything, follow up. Uh, a warning, my, my inbox is hell. So I have two inboxes. <laughs> and so I try really hard to answer everything if I miss it you are very welcome to yeah, just nag me. Uh, it's all good. I, I, do you want me to read you questions here? 
Yeah, yeah, sure. No, let's have a let's have a chat. Yeah. I, I, sorry, I've talked uh, quite a lot, but I hope some of these you may have already answered. If you already <laughs> did, you can just say skip. I'm just going to go in the popularity order of the votes. Um, sure. How do you feel about the recent open sourcing of NVIDIA kernel driver modules? Are you Actually, working no. with Red Hat and NVIDIA? Uh, to yes. get them upstream. No, so we, we work with the Red Hat. I have to be honest, I found out about it in the news, same as everybody else. And I said, no, I can't tell you that story. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so, but anyway, no, I am I'm genuinely excited because, um, yeah, I, I want Nouveau to work. I really do. Um, but I understand the challenges they're facing. I do not want to, I don't want to come across as if I'm throwing the Red Hat engineers under the bus. They didn't ever, blah, blah, blah. No, it's, not, it's not that. I totally get the challenges and what they have to work with. We have put a lot of pressure on NVIDIA. I don't know. I honestly can't say if that helps push them. NVIDIA are losing sales to a couple of my big uh, corporate Linux clients because of the closed source nature. So there's incentives for there. They have us badgering them. I'm sure other vendors are doing the same. So I'm excited. I looked at it like there's no graphic support in what they've done. There's a whole heap of work. And as anybody who works in Linux knows, a whole heap of work means it's not going to happen overnight. So I'm not, it's not going to have, I don't think it's going to help a lot this year. Uh, realistically, I might be wrong. Next year, maybe I'm looking at the year after that. Um, so uh, Neil also asked, the contributor sign-up portal for Lenovo discount seems to be gone. Is the <laughs> offer gone not. for Fedora contributors? No, 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 no. It's not. I think we had the wrong link out, right, Matthew? Yeah. We figured uh, so, that out? Uh, it turns out that the slash at the end stopped working. Yes, it used to work, and it. it does not work with the yes. slash at the end anymore. Um, yes. So we could find that and send that out again. And, and also, yeah. if you put the slash there, it does very confusing things. Um, right. So that it's, portal so, honestly has been yeah. a nightmare. Um, so yeah, take the slash off, you get that. The portal is still there. The, <laughs> I don't know if this is good or bad. It broke, right? The whole authentication broke around Black Friday, I think it was. And so the portal team went, ah, we'll just open it. <laughs> so honestly, <laughs> just go use. Uh, it's supposed to be a way of rewarding, of, of, of a discount for people who actually contribute to Linux. That's what we want. We want people who contribute to Linux, you know, get the discount plan. Um, but yeah, it's there. Um, the person who was running it went on maternal leave as well. So uh, I've got to get back in touch with her to get it all fixed up. But it is still there. I had a conversation with someone. The discounts are still decent, I believe. As always, my main recommendation is if there's a sale on, check the regular sale prices. They actually seem to fix that. Like there's a sale on think right now or last week anyway um but check the prices on the regular site first portal the way i look at the portal it's very like what we get as a you know we get an employee discount um and most of the time it's just like being able to get the sale price and when there's a sale on you kind of look at me like, ah. but um yeah so it, it is there should still work. every now and then it's really good i bought my uh, <laughs> desktop workstation with it and it was uh i bought it almost five thousand dollar configuration for uh, with on, on the regular store on the sale price for uh under three thousand um, dollars okay. so and uh, that, that p620 that was, that was nice. i don't have one of those yeah. i really yeah. want one of those it's i haven't got one yet it's a beautiful <laughs> computer <laughs> <laughs> I, I, almost I, got, I almost got one and then they were like no 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 we need this for a customer i was like really yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, so uh, yeah, go for it. Because there's oh, there's a ton of questions. We're gonna way run over, but um, I can I just take okay. one? There's one right at the top. Uh, yeah, sure. About ARM. So I can't really. So Linux is not planning record for that ARM-based laptop. Um, we're looking at it. So absolutely no promises there. But we we are looking at it. There's some big challenges. Uh, and I will. I hope I have positive news in the future. But for right now. Don't buy it expecting to put limits on it. Uh, do you think, uh, I don't know how much you could say this, do you, uh, but uh, will the will you have an ARM laptop which feels uh, comparable in performance to like the Mac M1 laptops? So, or are they going to be more of a perform, uh, like a um, you know, battery, um, uh, you know? I, no, that, more... so my understanding is that it says the X13S. Um, I haven't got one yet. Uh, I'm hoping to get one. Uh, but my understanding is it should be good now. Apple have done some really cool stuff in their silicon, let's be honest. But I think, no, it should be that X13S is supposed to be a developer grade ARM um, laptop. So at, all the specs I've seen are, you know, 32 gig, 32 gig RAM and uh, a decent sized disk with the low power. And a, I think it's got a decent Qualcomm CPU. Um, 
So I think it should be good. I don't know how it will compare with the Apple, um, but it definitely looks very interesting. All right, cool. Um, do you, yeah, uh, here's, this is a good one. Um, this may be old news, but why is Lenovo interested oh, yes. in shipping Linux? Is it part of a bigger strategy or about providing convenience to a certain market? So, uh, no, it's, it's a really good question. So, honestly, customer demand, which is the great thing. And I mean, I'm a Linux enthusiast. Right? My, I'm passionate about getting Linux running on these things, but it's customer demand, right? And so we see it. Uh, and the great thing is it's, it's, it's customer demand from both regular users like us lot and also big corporate accounts. It's actually, I, I have a, a folder with all the customers that I've talked to. It, it, it's getting long and it's amazing how much Linux is becoming more commonplace in the corporate world as well. Uh, there's, I mean, there's tons of good reasons for it, right? With the security and the privacy and, and, and all those great pieces that is why we know and love Linux. But that's, that's, it's, I think it's made it beyond mainstream. I mean, we've always had this the year of the Linux desktop and, and, and I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to predict that, but no, there's genuine demand out there. Um, I don't have numbers, but our Linux sales are increasing and just it's a little bit of a snowball as more people recognize that we have a Linux program and we are supporting it. It, it, it gathers. So yeah. we're still small. Um, I, yeah, I want to it's, it's, it's sneak real. in a, it's real. Th sneak in a thing there because he's mentioned support there. Uh, I asked you on email, so this is totally unfair. Uh, but, <laughs> like, uh, but uh, one of the things that you actually get if you buy a Lenovo laptop with Fedora pre-installed, um, you can then call up NVIDIA frontline support and ask Linux questions. I don't, um, think, you, I don't think you'll have any joy with NVIDIA, will you? No, oh, sorry, did I say NVIDIA? I was reading yeah. that on the screen. So oh, you're welcome. Me. Please, please. Right, do. yeah, no, call, so, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I, I, I was reading NVIDIA at the corner of my screen, the next question. Let me I try the, the whole thing again. Yeah. Call <laughs> Lenovo and ask Linux questions to <laughs> Lenovo's frontline support uh, if yes. you bought a laptop there. Um, what, yes. Uh, do, it's, do you get feedback from them? Oh, yeah, uh, that, yeah um, no, and it's, it's getting better. So I, I'm not going to promise you a brilliant experience. I can't yet. But I know, uh, particularly from the Premier Support team, actually, much more. Like I have a lot more engagement with them. They're really getting used to dealing with customers, asking for the SOS reports, collecting logs. Realistically, most of the questions come to us. They, they're actually able to handle some of the, you know, the common ones. Uh, on the, you know, the, the non-Premier Support, they shouldn't turn you away. Uh, they should be able to take your question. The ongoing problem we still have is they will ask you what you bought. And if you didn't buy a Linux preload, then you, it's a little bit of battle. Um, buy the Linux bought, preload, come on. <laughs> but yeah, if you bought a Linux preload, then absolutely you should get support. Um, I'm not sure how to phrase this. So Linux users fall generally into two camps. So there's 90% of the community is amazing to work with and understand that you can't fix. I, if I have an issue and it's a kernel issue, I, I'm going to work with a vendor and we're going to get the fix upstream and we're going to get it solved but that doesn't happen overnight it just doesn't like it's a slow process and and honestly even firmware issues they just take time and so i, I do have a number of of customers who are very demanding and and like i want this fixed now <laughs> That's tough, but yeah, no, you are. Colonel mailing you, list is over here. Yeah, um, no, and this is it. No, we try, we try not to make. We try and provide better than that. I, I, it's getting better. It's getting better. Okay. I think there's still a lot of work to do. I, I, in, if anybody has comments or experiences with them, then let me know. Um, and but yeah, overall, okay. they're talking to us, which is okay. which is good, and yeah. Cool. I would actually be interested in the other way around a little bit, like hearing from your support, first frontline support things, like things so, that we could make their lives easier. Oh, that's I interesting. That would... Yeah, so they don't actually, I guess the other thing I should be clear, they don't, a lot of our Linux calls go to our forums. So I don't know forums.lenovo.com, mm -hmm. I think it is. Anyway, we, we do, we're quite busy on there. Uh, we do a lot. I don't, I think most Linux people are just like, yeah, I don't want to go sit on the phone to talk to someone who's not going to know Linux and, and they bypass it and they get answers directly. So uh, yeah, it's interesting. And um, screen share for me is still like, uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know if there's any plans for screen share on Wayland for doing full thing. Like whenever I have to go and look at a customer's desktop to see what's actually going on. Um, but no, generally, so what we do, uh, SOS report is great, just collects 
a whole, probably the same as honestly Red Hat do for handling their issues. And then we dig into it, talk to the customer, mainly try and reproduce it. That's one of my biggest issues is if once we can reproduce it internally, it's much easier. Um, <laughs> that sounds so, familiar, yeah. Yeah, and one of the things that I took, and I'm worried I'm going over time and hate beating into someone we, else's. We, so we are over time. Um, yeah. We are, yeah. So um, into, yeah. maybe we- Hey, I no, just, actually, wanna jump, just wanna jump in here. We have a break for the next half hour. So oh, if our just, presenter is willing- Double checking oh, that, if that I'm, was true. I'm totally cool. I just didn't wanna override somebody no. else's yeah. presentation. At, uh, <laughs> the <laughs> half an hour is our hard um, stab for the next session. So if okay. you wanna take some more and, Q and A, you're welcome to do so. And the other thing I will mention is that I'm hoping it's all right if I come do Fedora Nest. Uh, I know, I, was it last year I couldn't make it because I was at the cottage? Uh, so I, I time people, is who knows so, some year. So, but no, I, I've 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 picked this aside. So I will be for doing this. So if I don't answer anything, save your questions and come back. I mean, you can email me. But this is fun stuff. To so I hope it is anyway. Okay. It is for me. Um, but so, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm I can also I'm definitely happy to hang around and take questions if people want that. Let's do it a little bit longer here. Um, there's a question about um, basically a USB C Lenovo dock is not detecting yes. some monitors. Blah blah blah. Um, sorry, not blah blah blah. But uh, yeah, no, it's... no, no. Okay, let's talk now. Doc, docs is docs is a challenge. Uh, so that was rude. Say... I didn't mean blah blah blah. I just no. there's a lot. Oh, lot of, yeah, for who, lot of text. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah, but... uh, and I haven't seen the question. So I'll, yeah, I'll uh, is it is there? Plans to provide proper support and integration of the docking stations okay. is the actual yes. question. Yes, then that's a really good question. So we do certify the US, uh, the, no, the Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4 dock. We have certified those. There are issues, especially with multi-display support. Like one display, pretty good. Uh, two, get its issues. And and I, I'm actually using Thunderbolt 4, which is one kind of intrigued. I think, I think I must have pulled the power out of my monitor. Uh, think about it. I've got a raised desk and I put it up for doing these things. Um, but anyway. Um, so we do do that, and we've had some challenges with the docking team. So again, you guys will understand this, right? So it's uh, debugging docking issues is hard. So I had a customer case, particularly with, uh, and it was actually with the USB-C dock with Thunderbolt, but trying to find out where the issue is. Is it a Linux kernel? Is it a docking firmware? Is it, we have lots of monitor interop issues, like trying to figure out where the problem is. That has been a real, real challenge and and that particular case it was interesting we went down a great big rabbit hole and it i ended up talking to the intel thunderbolt controller people and we found the issue and we fixed it uh and that's fixed um so that's good but it was it took a long time to be able to figure out where the root cause it. and we honestly we're still a bit naive in that side of things and that's something which we've really got to improve on is is being able to say okay this doesn't work how do you focus on where the problem is? But so the, the good news is, is the docking team have, um, we recently did our, we called winter funding, but we basically, you know, allocated the funding. So we put in a big request to get some more funds for the docking team. So I'm waiting for that to be approved, but I'm hoping that gives them some more resources to spend specifically on Linux. And there are some internal exercises that, so we can do more testing. So that's Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4. So I can't promise USB-C yet, but I am testing firmware updates on LVFS uh, next week when I get my USB-C dock. So there is little nuggets of progress here and there, and anything we fix on one dock tends to help the other. So uh, I thought you were going to say going to break the other. So that's good. No. That I want the direction. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> usually, usually, you know, like the issue we found with that controller. It, you know, it fixed it for one particular dock, but then it also helps on all the others. Um, and I know there's an Ethernet issue that I still haven't got my head around. So our docking support, there's more needed. I, there... Is it that the, the Ethernet doesn't show up the first time you boot and then you have to plug it in and back in again? Yeah. Okay, because I have that with a non-Lenovo. I've got an Anchor, like, third-party dock, and it has exactly that problem, and it didn't okay. used to. So yeah. I think there's yeah, it's else a, it's going a regression, on. and I haven't, I just haven't been able to track it down. I started, and doing bisect sucks. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, um, cool. If you solve that, that'll make me personally happy because mm. it's annoying. Um, there's actually two related questions here. Um, is there any plans for our Intel Arc laptops? And then the related question is. Uh, AMD Legion uh, gaming laptops. Okay. Um, 
So uh, Intel, I assume that's the graphics card, right? The it's D there, yeah. Intel discrete, it's basically, graphics card. Yeah, yeah that's on. That's oh, I, see. This is where I get into trouble. It's like I'm not supposed to talk about stuff that isn't announced, but yeah, that's on the roadmap. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yes, uh, again, and and I'll be I'll be uh, I've been I've been talking to the Intel graphics people recently. Uh, again, a great team, uh, lovely bunch of people. So yeah, um, I don't have any experience with it yet. Don't go buying one now and expecting it to be wonderful, but um. But yes, we, we will be doing some sort of work on that. Uh, Legion, though bad news there is no. Uh, I don't know anybody in the Legion team. I would love to do Legion. I think it would be awesome. I'd love to get them as part of the Linux program. Uh, if you buy a system, make sure you do your customer survey saying, I want Linux on this. Uh, put, you know, put the requests in the forms. They have stuff that goes and scrapes forums looking for customer feedback and analyzing it. So let them know. Uh, we have a big enough Linux program now that at some point, I'm expecting they'll turn around and say, hey, can we do Linux certification? And that will unlock it all. But right now, no, it's not, not right now. And same for just, I'll be honest, the same for the idea pad. So. I know, because my daughter is a gamer, that it uses the IQ um, stuff to control the lights and things on the laptop, okay. on the Legion yeah. things. And so we just recently built a desktop system. She wanted to build it herself. So oh, uh, she, she actually... Awesome. She actually she actually did it and I kind of helped. It was, it was actually great. Um, yeah. And so she bought all the Corsair stuff and then she was, so I gave her a price limit and she had to pay above that. And she was going to put windows on it because, you know, kids. Because that's the best way to upset your father. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> but then w when she was looking at, she's like, wait, I have to, if I build my own computer, I have to pay how much for windows? So she decided she, she would, she would be like, okay, dad, I'll try it. And so she's actually, so, um, uh, but she was like, but I need the lights to work. So it turns out there's some, you know, um, community yeah. made uh, drivers that uh, control yeah, the lights was, ju just they, fine. Yeah. Um, so that part's there for Legion already if they need to need that. Yeah, that, I think that was on, was that on Linux Unplugged? They talked about it a few months back. Oh, but maybe yeah, I there's a, yeah, there's a, pro there's a project where that stuff's kind of working. So yeah, I have no experience with it there. I think pads don't have exciting LEDs, unfortunately. The um, one thing, and I don't know if it'll make a difference. So one thing that bit us quite, or bit a lot of AMD users with Linux uh, last year is, uh, is uh, modern standby, uh, is the sleep support. Um, and the fact that Linux didn't support it and Windows required it. Um, so the good news is, is with all the new AMD uh, CPUs, so um, I know I can't use code names. But anyway, this year's platform, um, the, you know, modern standby is plan a record from AMD. And so that will help remove one of those annoying issues where it works in Windows and it doesn't in Linux. So I, I'm kind of hoping that filters down because I know I was on a number of forum things and they're like yeah you need to force the sleep by doing these these things because there wasn't uh on the linux certified platforms there was an option in the bios to go change the, the sleep mode um but of course the legions wouldn't have that because they don't support linux um but i think that problem will just go away with the with the newer platforms so right. uh, and then this question about uh lenovo vantage uh, counterpart yeah. on linux That's so I, thresholds track point special buttons yeah and i I had a conversation with the main Vantage developer a couple of years ago. We kind of went through a bunch of Vantage and, and a lot of the key things just don't make sense in Linux. You know, a lot of it's around doing updates and drive updates and photos. That doesn't make sense. So there are some pieces we're missing. Um, so, and like battery, I, sp I did a bunch of digging into battery. There was uh, some new TCO um, support that we were supposed to meet. And most of it's there in Linux already. So it's just not, it's not necessarily wonderfully packaged, but you can actually do all of the controls. I had a conversation with a kernel maintainer about adding in some battery recalibration changes, but he wanted it in user space. He didn't want it in kernel. So we haven't really made progress with that. Um, so yeah, um, and, and it's kind of interesting. I think there'll be like, if you go look at the website for the ZZ series, um, you know, it's got an enhanced track point, and I think we're going to be missing some of the enhancement on Linux, and that's something which we're going to look at. We, I, I didn't do the polls, so I think, um, oh, okay, I, I can't see them anyway. Um, well, let me, let me go one, look. One I'll the, I, 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 and, 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 and poor old Marie and Matthew, like literally, I think was it half an hour before, while you were also <sighs> covering. But by the way, that CPA um, presentation was awesome. I'm so jealous of their slides. I'm like, I got to come up with a movie for next week uh, for next time. Um, <laughs> um, All right. 
but uh, yeah. yeah, one of the pros is like the packaging. Uh, so yeah. I Let, really struggle with Linux packaging and knowing how to release things and the best way of doing it. And, and that's going to be something with Linux Vantage. So. I'll, I'll go through the polls here for you. Uh, the preferred okay. application packaging, uh, we've got... Um, oh, so wait, I can't see them. How come I can't see uh, them? Because I you're can't. not a... Um, uh, I'm not. I'm not important. Moderator, <laughs> oh, you don't see the polls existing, or you don't see the answers. No, I don't see the uh, polls. Oh, uh, there. They should be over on. If you click on event, there's polls there at the top oh, of the thing. Oh, I'm in the wrong yeah. place. Yeah. All right, so, so, yeah. uh, so Flatpak has got 11 votes, 40 percent, and RPM has 15 votes, 55 okay. percent, and one person who uses Arch. Um, <laughs> DPW. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> um, and see, yeah, so it looks like, you know, pretty solid people would like like the traditional RPM, but Flatpak's got to also okay. catch, catching up as a following there. Yeah. Um, I guess for me, it depends on exactly what the thing is. If it's very application-like, yeah. I think Flatpak has a lot of advantages. If it is something a little closer to the OS than um, RPM and, or... And yeah, it's always the issue, right? So doing Vantage, would I get to do an open source Vantage? So so actually, I, let me just finish yeah. by, on the Vantage side. So my preference generally is I would rather do support, a, you know, an, an open source friendly point of way. So I'd rather have stuff like we, uh, I did the platform profile driver uh, for the kernel and I didn't do the GNOME integration bit. And thank you to um, Bastion for doing that. Uh, and I think a few other people. Should have changed one there, but um, I would rather do things in that way so that it's honestly any vendor can use it and that it's done tied in. So I, I, I've been a little bit hes hesitant to. I mean, there's there's groups in Lenovo that would love to have the branded application, and, and it's not necessarily a bad right. thing. But I really don't want to do anything that should be done like battery. I don't think I'd really want Advantage. I'd rather have something that was open source done for everybody rather than just a, I don't know. A, a, there'll yeah. be other there'll it, be other use cases where that doesn't hold as well. But that seems like there could be an open source thing underneath and the Vantage UI just able to yeah, call through Yeah, exactly. It with, and and unfortunately, I'm not a UI user space developer. So I, and I, so it's, yeah, it's not, I don't always think that way and I probably should. So some of the other polls here, um, it's about evenly split between um, release with closed source drivers for hardware works. So that's 53% and um, then 47% for don't release if the, all the hardware doesn't that's, work. Yeah, um, no, and that was really a pointed one because I mean, it, it ties back to the NVIDIA, ties back to MIPI. There, there's challenges for us, right? Uh, and yeah, it, it, it's important. Yeah. And, and, we, and we kind of danced around the idea of doing a Fedora spin with NVIDIA and I really don't want to go there. Uh, I'd rather, I like the fact that we do Fedora unadulterated, right? We add documentation yeah. and, and, and I like that and I'm proud of that. Uh, so it's my preference, but it does mean some releases don't happen. Yeah. So the next one came out interestingly, which is basically, um, which is more important, full hardware support or, mm. um, or basically, or, or releasing at the same time as the Windows, even if something's missing. Um, only two people, 6%, went for release the same time as Windows. They rather rather you hold okay. off uh, until it works. Interesting. Which is, yeah, that's interesting. Right. I, I, I'm one of the two people who voted the other way, actually. Yeah. So, and and, and uh, just, again, for the community, um, uh, I, I went to a, uh, a Linux meetup. It was a Debian meetup in, in Montreal. But I happened to be dropping my parents off at the airport in Montreal, so I went there. And it was fascinating because there were a lot of ThinkPads. They were ancient ThinkPads. I didn't know what they were. I looked at them all. <laughs> I was like, it was kind of cool, and it was genuine. It was nice to hang out with Linux people. Uh, my French is not quite good enough, but it, I, I got by. Um, but yeah, and and so the, the 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 warning I give with that is I, I understand where you're coming from because yeah having full Linux support for everything would be fantastic but the product cycles are so short the one of the issues we've had is like once we're six to nine months past the Windows release date everybody's looking at us going we're not going to put it online that you know everything's just tail end now and we're, we're all looking at the next gen so it's it's a balance um but that makes me, I, I had I had on my KPI last year. Uh, KPI is key performance indicator, so it's stuff that I sign up that these are the things I'm going to work. I had that I wanted to get uh, you know some of our Linux releases out within two weeks of Windows. 
didn't hit that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're you're setting yourself up for failure with that. Yeah. You're, you're well, depending no, we were on... so close. We were oh, so close oh, with the oh. X1 Carbon 9. Yeah. We were so close. And then we oh. had a panel issue with the yeah. PSR2 refresh. So many and... things outside of your control, right? That, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I'm not putting it on so... my I'm not putting it on my uh on my on my review for this year. <laughs> yeah. But so... I still think it's important. I think this is really important uh to be able to get it because the problem is the systems go online and if we don't have the support, you can't buy Linux, and it's uh, so. Uh, yeah, it's really I, useful to have that feedback. I just, I'm just offering the my right. kind of. I want the Linux business to take off. So. Yeah, and I think that's. I, I've seen all this going on. That's probably what made me tend to vote the other way because uh, we, <laughs> yeah, you can if, vote, yeah. If, if we can't we can't magically make these these things happen i'd rather it be an option without you know smart card support because yeah. it's a niche that you know for the niche that needs it it's very important but for everybody yeah. else and, then they they can't have it and, and uh, putting putting wan in there was a bit of a red flag because uh, we've really struggled with wan it, we made huge amounts of progress but it's still not there and and it's one of those devices yeah. that we should be able to get out on time when we don't, you know, so. just tether with your phone come on uh, <laughs> um preferred cpu uh intel is uh 13 votes amd is 15 votes um arm is only three risk five gets six and power <laughs> i've stuck in there for yes, you yes thank uh, you it, yes it, I, I was going through trying to think of all the different options i almost put uh, enhanced the uh, powered but i didn't yeah, I no, yeah, right there. just actual actual power <laughs> architecture no votes uh wind up clockwork beats that yeah. with one <laughs> excellent there. there we go so there's the polls all right cool. um thank you for putting those up yeah um so uh, the la let's do one last before we actually need to get some break before the next session's here. Um, the last question from Neil was, uh, when can we see the Fedora Linux laptops in you know, box stores oh, for sale? Wouldn't that be, wouldn't, wouldn't that be nice? Um, so, uh, 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 so there's a few things. So we still are only, Linux is only on the uh, config to order CTO. Uh, so we still have that limitation. Uh, we haven't basically, it's going to take a while. So we have to prove there's enough Linux demand that a Geo is going to pre-order thousands of the Fedora loaded laptops and have them sat in a warehouse and be confident they're going to sell. Like that's that's how you do the ready to ship, the, the which is the cheaper Windows version. So we're not there yet. We don't have the sales numbers to back that up. And uh, it's not that people aren't willing to consider it, but we just don't have it. And I think until we get there, we won't have retail stores. So I don't know how things get into retail stores. I think it happens maybe more in geos that don't have web sales. Uh, I, I don't know that well, but I, I don't think we're there yet. I, I, I can see, I genuinely, I, th I think we got, I think there's gonna be a lot more growth for Linux, especially if we actually manage to get our act together and get some systems online um, quickly. And and I'm, I'm genuinely optimistic this year is gonna be better and we can all, throw tomatoes I, at me at Fedora Nest when it hasn't will, happened. But, I will yeah. pick up that optimism. That sounds great. Yeah. Um, Thank you yeah, very much, Mark. This is fun as always.